Okay, welcome. This is Information Literacy uh, Part 1, and I'm going to be talking about how to go about finding information. Uh, and uh, then in Part 2, we'll look at evaluating information. So, as I said, uh, the two parts, we need to know where to find information, and we need to know good information from bad information. Uh, students will often find bad information, or they'll go about looking for information in a particularly non-helpful way. So, uh, the first step is knowing what you need to know. Not where to look, but knowing what you need to know. And first off, what you need to do is you need to think about that you're not looking for an answer, which I know that students are very familiar with the idea of going onto the internet to look for an answer to a question. You need to think about this as solving a problem, because one of the problems with looking for an answer is when you think you have the answer, you stop, because why continue? And a problem, solving a problem, you need to be convinced that you've solved it correctly. And so not only do you need to know the answer, but you need to know it's the correct answer. And so that's why I prefer a problem-solving approach. And then to begin, you need to know what you know, what you don't know, and that will allow you to know what you need to know that is what to look for. So let's take a, an example problem. Uh, here's a textbook, uh, intro, uh, IO Psychology, and we're talking about how to evaluate training programs. And there's three different uh, designs. Uh, pre and post designs, one and two, they are easy to understand. Solomon, they just give a very short uh, paragraph on it, and it's really not clear even to me. So uh, I know that students probably would not uh, have a clear idea what was going on. And so if you ran across this in a textbook, you'd may, maybe say to yourself, well, what are, you know, what, what's going on here? Why is it superb? Uh, what, what are these several useful comparisons? Uh, the author is assuming that I know what he's talking about, which is a bad idea. Uh, so these are the questions. And so uh, you think about problem solving. Why is this superb? What does the author say it's superb? What are these comparisons? So you have to focus on what you know. Uh, we know that there's this name, a Solomon Four Group Design. Uh, we know what it's used for. Uh, we know it's related to the pre-post designs in some way. Uh, what we don't know is how does it work? How do you actually do it? What steps are in the process are there? Why is it superb? And uh, what are these several comparisons? And so you just flip those around into, qu into uh, you know, s statements about what you need. I need to explain, you know, I need to find an explanation of the Solomon Four Group Design. I need to understand its relationship to internal validity. And I have to understand what these comparisons are. So start with what you trust. And uh, you should trust your textbook the most. Uh, the professor chose it, so the professor has evaluated it and has you know, decided to go with it. And it's a very hard process, process for professors to you know, uh, evaluate and change textbooks. Uh, and uh, usually if it's a published textbook, it means that it's been reviewed very carefully. And there's a couple other heuristics that you can use. Additions are good. If something's in its fifth edition, that means that five times before, it was popular enough that they decided to update it and publish it again and get people to pay money for it again. And so the higher number of editions, that's good as a heuristic. Do you recognize the publisher's name? Uh, do you know the name of the publisher of your textbooks for your different classes? Uh, you may want to check them out. Uh, do you recognize the names? You should start to you know recognize these things uh, because there are certain publishing houses which are better quality that are used more often and publishing houses which are n not that used not that oftenly used and probably because they're not that quality uh, you know publishing houses. So you should start to really recognize the names and keep a, a mental list of names that you recognize. 
So one of the first things you want to do in the textbook is that you want to go to the subject index. And so uh, this is uh, the Solomon four group design. Let's go to the index about that. Here's the table we saw and here's the page that we saw. So nothing new there. We, we got unlucky. Uh, then this is an evaluation design. Uh, evaluation, nope. Uh, it does show up under experimental design, but again, it's the same one. Uh, you know, it talked about internal validity. I don't really remember what that was about. That was like, you know, uh, a month or so ago. If I was a student, I'd be saying that. So I go and check that out. Oh, there's a big, you know, section of three pages uh, here on internal validity. So that should help me out. So that would be something I'd want to check out. So our most trusted so uh, source, the textbook, is really not panning out, so uh, maybe we should go to PsycInfo. Uh, that's a little bit less trusted than the textbook because you don't know what you're going to get. Some things are very, very trustworthy on PsycInfo. Some things aren't. Usually the peer-reviewed things are more trustworthy. So I go to PsycInfo. I type in the Solomon Four Group Design. I click on peer review to make this more trustworthy. And what do I find? And I find a lot of experiments that use the Solomon design. Uh, and these are not really that informative to a student because you know they're just saying, oh yeah, and in this experiment I used the Solomon design. And so it may provide you with an example of how it would be used. Now let me move the mic up. Uh, but it's really not that helpful in explaining it. Uh, one of them seemed to be a review article. And, uh, you know, it does have like a two-page description of the Solomon design and this useful chart, which has the four groups and also the comparisons, and also in the uh, text it will lists out the four comparisons. So this is fantastic, but you know again, don't take the idea of okay that I'm looking for a solution. Uh, I mean I'm looking for an answer. I found it, so I stop uh, because uh, I don't expect many uh, undergraduate students to understand this. Uh, the reason why is it's written at a technical level for people with PhDs or master's degrees. And uh, I know that you could probably barely understand this. And also I know that students would then try to take this and try to shove it into some type of you know, uh, assignment that I would ask about this uh, topic and try to answer it without really knowing what they're talking about. So they'd just be... Uh, uh, you know, blabbering about like different uh, terms that they think are important, but it's clear to me that the student doesn't know what these terms mean. So again, if you're taking a problem-solving approach, the problem is not solved yet, because you need to be able to understand this and to articulate it yourself. But this is not in vain. Uh, let's save this, and I'll show you why in a couple of minutes. So couple things I did uh, is I unchecked peer review uh, to get like some you know uh, more broadness in terms of the results and that really didn't work uh, that well and then I typed in different terms to try to find like a review or overview and as you can see here that didn't work uh, so this Avenue panned out uh, so then I'm gonna go to Google Scholar uh, Google Scholar is Google, uh, but what they're trying to do is provide a search engine for college professors or researchers. And this search engine is not going to find websites as Google does, but it's going to find research articles. Uh, so it's somewhat like PsycInfo. Uh, and as long as you're logged in at York or you're logged into the VPN, uh, Google Scholar will automatically pull up uh, what articles are available through the VPN at York, which is kind of cool. And 
what we see here when we search for uh, this uh, topic on Google Scholar is we see a lot of examples of using the Solomon design in uh, you know different experiments but no real explanations so again this avenue kind of didn't work out that well either but you you may want to you know look at a couple one of these examples to see if it helps and then finally we go to the least trustworthy of sources of information uh, Google Google is going to search for uh, web pages and is going to also search based on popularity so it'll find and list the more popular websites first uh, and less popular websites later uh, popularity is not really that important in terms of research uh, so that's one of the drawbacks also anybody can make a website and so uh, you may be taken to a website that looks fantastic but really is extremely untrustworthy but we type in Solomon for group design look at all the suggestions they give us so we're gonna have some luck here and here's the first page first off we find this uh, notice there's that table again that chart other charts this is looks interesting this is the Wikipedia article Wikipedia is an encyclopedia and so use it like an encyclopedia and so I would click on that and look at the article and read it it's written more at an undergraduate students level and it should help you uh, you know understand what's going on uh, Wikipedia is fairly trustworthy but again uh, you would never use an encyclopedia article as a reference in a paper in college likewise you would never use a Wikipedia encyclopedia article as a reference for an article in college or a paper that you're writing in college but you can definitely use it to get background information likewise here uh, this is uh, the sage encyclopedia of community methods research methods that looks good by the way sage is a very very reputable uh, new publishing house and you probably may recognize their name so therefore click on this if you click on this there's an encyclopedia article uh, on the four group design and so you're starting to get more information to fill out and flush out this idea about what is this uh, and then you could go here you could go here this is a video with like cartoons that explain the design you could look at that do these formats look similar or to something you've seen before uh, and actually if you go down here yes it's Miami psych uh, these are lectures from uh, the same course or the similar course uh, you know uh, you know that I use for uh, testing and measurement uh, for video lectures so maybe this is more trustworthy than anything else here because I certainly recommended another one of these videos uh, so what you're doing is you're evaluating the trustworthiness of all this information and so again we have levels of trust the textbook you're going to trust the most psych info uh, a little bit less Google Scholar a little bit less Google uh, the bottom of trust but what you're going to do is this uh, I said for example we're going to look at psych info and we're going to save that one article that talks about uh, the Solomon design but you may not really understand it why are we going to save it well here's what we're going to do we're going to take that information in that article and we're going to try to correlate it with what's in our textbook and also we're going to take what we find in Google Scholar and correlate it with what we find in our textbook and psych info and we're going to take information that we find in Google and Google Scholar and we're going to correlate it with everything else the idea is is that we're going to take things that we trust more and that may be more difficult to understand and then we're going to take things that are easier to understand but come from less trustworthy sources 
and we're saying, well, Google is telling me, like that little video with the cartoon people is telling me that the four comparisons are this, this, and this. Does the textbook help me out in confirming that that's correct? Does psych, that PsychInfo article, does that help confirm what that Google video, video is telling me is correct? And so I have no way of knowing if that video is trustworthy or not, but if what the information in the video is explaining to me correlates with the PsychInfo article and your textbook, then that tells you that I could probably trust that uh, video. And so that's another way that you can take a problem-solving approach. Well, the problem is the material that you can trust the most is not very helpful to you, not very understandable. The material that you trust the least uh, is, you know, very, very easy to understand. How can you find something that's easy to understand and trustworthy? And the answer is you look at it as a problem and you solve the problem by trying to find corrobor co uh, co corroborating evidence uh, in the more trustworthy sources from the least trustworthy sources. And so that's it for part one. I'll see you again in part two.